do. You go to the ROTC program here, yes, sir. If you look on the wall and go back 30 years ago, you'll see my dad, 1995, on our son at the third, all right? So, for whatever that's worth. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Andrew Lumpkin, I'm a senior, and I'm getting my major in marine biology. All right, where are you headed after this? Uh, probably down in Mobile and I'm trying to get an internship down in Dalton Island. My grad degree came from South Alabama, so I know the area well. And, and of course, in high school, went to Dolphin Island Sea Lab a couple of times. So good little area down there. Yes, sir. I'm a sophomore in the nursing program. All right. So where, where is the nursing school right now? Because they're going to renovate the previous one, right? Well, I'm still in career right now. I'm okay. not in the program just yet. Okay. But they're in the library. In the library, huh? Wow, that's making that a busy place. Yeah. All right. What, <laughs> great program. What about you, sir? Uh, Jared Gallup, senior. Uh, I'm Christian Safety, so I'm on the third floor here. Okay. Uh, Good degree. Uh, yeah. Very marketable. Um, plan right now, I just got an internship with a helicopter company uh, over the summer. So I plan to stay with them in the helicopter business as well as uh, second lieutenant uh, aviation. Okay. So we got some good plans. Yes, sir. Jesus Lopez, I'm a senior, criminal justice major. Uh, I plan on getting my master's. So. What do you want to get your master's in? Uh, so I have a minor in psychology, so I'll probably get in psychology. Okay, so get your master's in psychology here. Have they played with? They still the, uh, do they still do the pigeon lab downstairs? Oh yeah, I, I did that uh, right when COVID hit. Okay. So I got I got my fair share of having a pet pigeon. Oh, that's like making best friends with feather friend. How about our friend behind the camera? I'm Ryan Peterson. You're the one I've been communicating yeah. with. Okay. <laughs> Good deal. Saving um, the best for last. Yeah, I'm a film major, uh, obviously. Surprise! <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I have a minor in. Management, so I'll be in here still with that. Um, but what I want to do with it, like I kind of, I want to be like a director for like a major movie company. Pretty okay. Soon, just kind of work with that. Good deal. And where do you want to move to? You want to stay in the South? You want to move out to Los Angeles with all the very normal, stable people? That live out there? I'm, I don't really. I like, Hollywood. I'm probably going to stay in. Uh, I'm going to go to Georgia probably and stay in that area because I'm originally from there. Okay. What well, part of Georgia? Blue Ridge, same as Seth. Okay. Good deal. Would you claim them outside of Blue Ridge? I would. <laughs> probably good, probably good. Well, gentlemen, I know high level through correspondence we've had that there's uh, an event, kind of like your professional development, that's what we'll call it, that you'd like me to be involved in. So for better or worse, it's what you get when you get for free, okay? Uh, a little bit about myself, I don't know what uh, Seth has shared with you. Uh, I have two of my three degrees are from Jack State. So I grew up in the local area, in Oxford. My mom and dad are both retired military. So I was born in California, we traveled a lot. They got stationed out of what is now, or what was Fort McClellan when I was seven. So Alabama's home, I've been here for 30 plus years of my life. Uh, made a career in accounting. So my first degree was in 04. I uh, went straight to South Alabama, got my master's in accounting, and then went into the wild world of public accounting. Does anybody have any friends, family that work in accounting? All right, they're not very friendly people, so stay away from them, okay? Uh, public accounting is good. It is a meat grinder, but uh, those that go into my field, is where you will learn the quickest amount of your experience. So I was an auditor by trade. Uh, that's how I learned all the crazy stuff that I attempt to teach on Monday and Wednesday nights to Seth and his group. Uh, but I always had a heart to teach. I knew early on I wanted to teach, but I didn't want to go babysit K-12. I knew I wanted to do it at this level. So fast forward a few years, back in the fall of 2009, we had a professor who was out on medical leave, and I was given the shot to teach. And I hope what I'm about to share with you guys will happen for you at least once in your life. It won't happen often, but when I stepped into my first class here in fall of 09, it was one of those few moments in life where I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I said, this is where I want to be. And I didn't necessarily think it was Jack State. I was perfectly fine, but I said, I want to teach in higher ed. But I will go ahead and give you this encouragement that just because it's something you want to do, don't bank on it happening right away. It wasn't for another nine years, August of 2018, that I got hired on full time, and that's where I'm at with Gadsden State. But what's interesting is, through the years, uh, from the time I graduated in 04 to coming back in 09, just had a wild crack. Said, have you told them all my degrees? Do they know all? Okay. So I had two degrees, one in undergraduate in accounting, one master's. What do y'all think my third degree is in? I got this degree from 29, uh, 2009 to 2012 when I was here teaching. What do y'all think I got it in? Total curve box, nothing business related. What do you think, sir? Engineering. I'm glad I come across with it, liking that. No, <laughs> not quite. Not quite. No, no one ever guesses it. I love it. That underwater, underwater basket weaving, all right, it's no, no. Psychology, all right, because I like a little insane in the memory. I look at it this way. At that time, while I was teaching, I thought if I'm going to go back for further education, I want to get, uh, I want to complete a bachelor's that could lead to a doctoral program. My goal was to get a PhD in clinical psych that would allow me to teach. I don't care if I'm teaching accounting, underwater basket weaving, or psychology. I love being in front of the classroom. So I thought I could teach. 
I could have my own small practice and life would go on. How well has every perfect plan you've planned gone? Not so great, right? You can do everything right. You can have that 4.0 GPA. You can do all those things. And it doesn't always lead to the outcome, but you don't fall apart for that, all right? So I finished up teaching. I finished that assignment for that professor who was on medical leave, finished that degree, and went back into corporate America, continued my career in accounting. And it led uh, to a lot of wonderful opportunities. Our economy started picking up around 2013, 2014, which now feels like a golden era, considering what we're paying in gas. So it cost me $71 to go up that hot on Sunday. That hurt after church. I apparently didn't pray enough, all right? The budget still hurt. But that's where we're at, right? Hopefully by the time you guys graduate, Mike takes you on, some of this mess we're dealing with will, I would say, stabilize over the next couple of years, all right? The number one thing I want to encourage you with with the economy, and I'll talk a little bit more about myself. I, won't, I know you're not here to hear me talk the whole night, all right? I'm just giving you an intro. Uh, is I want you to be prepared for the ebbs and flows of life. And that's going to go a lot into what you, what you guys, I think, are going to want me to speak on when that time comes, and I'll start going into more detail. So, my career, I've let flow, but I'll tell you the number one thing that's helped me along the way wasn't just having the right education. What do you think the other, I would say, not more important, but equally critical part? So that's not about the answer. He's heard all, this, all these ramblings all semester. Yes, sir. You know. You know. I'll, I'm going to be real. That is, the, that is the typical correct answer. I'm going to take it a step further. I've worked with people whose daddy or mama, all right, I'm going to use some real Randolph County slang here. Uh, knew somebody that got them in the bank or got them in here, but they didn't know a single thing. How long do you think they lasted at that job? Okay, doesn't happen unless the mama and daddy own the company. It's not going to happen. So my point is, you better build relationships along the way while you're learning whatever you need to learn, because you have to think if you want a good starting salary, if you want to stand out from the 76 other people that applied for that job, what makes you more important? What makes you more unique? What makes you more trainable? That's what I'm looking for in class. I'm not looking at even in my accounting classes if you have the guilty pleasure of having me, which is, does anybody besides Seth need accounting in here? Anybody else had accounting in here? Probably not. Who'd you have for accounting? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Did you have that principles one and two? Yes. Because you're a finance major? What's your major name? CIS. CIS, but you go into the bank. You want to work in the computer information side of it? Okay. Why do you think they make you take accounting? I'm going to go into the big uh, side. I did a lot. I've took away some programming. I don't want to do that. So I'm more like an IT consultant right now. Okay. Um, so a lot of what I do with right now is with uh, the finance part, and uh, a lot of my keywords is from risk and from fraud right now. So where do you uh, think where do you think there's some there's a lot of big bucks made in computer science in general? But what do you think related to accounting makes you ultra valuable if you know it? Data analytics for that um, because I do a lot of data science. How about accounting software? Yep. When I worked at Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, we used a company called Sage. Sage is a major accounting software provider. Those that come to implement that software, what do you think they need to be able to do? Understand accounting. So when the controller, the guy sitting there says, hey, will the system do this? Or my inventory control clerk says, hey, I need to do this. They understand what's going on down in credit. So just something to keep in mind. If you ever had to minor, accounting would be something good to have. Because you take computer science and accounting together, you can write your paycheck in yeah, the next business finance. There you, there you go. All right, gentlemen, so that's a little bit about me. So why am I here? Uh, again, my career culminated in the private sector. I was a controller for what was called Pioneer Concrete Pumping Service. Anybody familiar with what a controller does at all? Okay. Controller is your highest level accounting manager in a function. Uh, if a company has any senior executive officers like CEO, CFO, that would be above my level. So as the controller at Pioneer, I was responsible for all the financial reporting and accounting we had a month in. I was responsible for all the month in closings. We had six companies all together. We were the largest concrete pumping operation in North America, so out of Atlanta. None of this is bragging. This is just letting you know that the person you're asking to help you with things has real world credentials to go behind. And I'll go back to what you said. My connection to Atlanta, Georgia, wasn't me getting on Indeed.com and spending five hours looking for a job. What do you think it was? It all relates to you guys in here. Building connections else. Say it again. I said building and using my connections else. What do you think? Who do you think that connection was? You all have it in common. Fraternity. I have a fraternity brother that was working at that company, but I'm going to go a little bit further. He wasn't a pledge brother. He wasn't somebody I went through a bunch of crazy stuff with back in 2001. He was actually one of the undergraduates that I mentored in 2010. And then when that controller position came open six years later, 
I did not stay in touch with Taylor. Taylor was just one of the young party guys, all right? But I was like a big brother mentor. When I was here, I was advising for my fraternity. I was a CF, all right? I know they haven't been around for a hot minute, but we were back then. And I used to run study halls at the library, just anything else, just general advising. I enjoyed that. I always enjoyed it. Anyway, so a seed that was planted in fall 2010 came to fruition in April 2016, okay? Because when the current controller was promoted to VP of operations, Taylor called me and said, John, you know, I had a good job. I wasn't looking for anything. But he called and said, hey, John, the control is open. I've recommended you. You need to apply. Did Taylor get me that job? Absolutely not. Was Taylor my bridge who recommended? And then I had to sell myself in an interview, and then I had to sell myself those first 30, 60, 90 days, and so on. So absolutely. So my point to that is it's a mix of you better have the confidence in those basic skill sets, and someone's going to vouch for you. You better not let them down. There's nothing worse than recommending somebody for something and then they fail you because they don't do the job well. So, anyway, that's just kind of high level a little bit about the crazy guy you've asked to do this for, okay? So, what do you guys want to share with me tonight? What do you want to know about me? Kind of tell me what I can do to help y'all with our upcoming event that I'm going to be helping host for you guys. Was this more of a meet and greet, or did you guys want to kind of give me a formal kind of breakdown of what you want from me and all that stuff? Yeah, kind of just like more of like a, like a formal kind of breakdown of like different things. So like the, the link and stuff like that that I sent you um, for the session, like just kind of just basic information about that and give your stance on that as well. Okay. So let me ask you guys this. Is this going to be an event that I'm going to be giving to your entire chapter, be your fraternity, or is it just going to be the people in the room? This is it. This is it? It's open to anybody in the chapter seniors. Uh, so the way we break it down is we break it down into different phases. So phase one is for freshmen, phase two for sophomore, and so on. Okay. Uh, this is phase four uh, in session. So it's more like a breaking down different topics. Okay. Uh, I think will be helpful to mature and uh, grow young men into Absolutely. Okay. Tell me this. What would make your time valuable with me? Do you guys want me to speak? And how long do you want me to speak for? Doesn't matter to me. Because we're going to engage. So I have to tell you, I'm not going to speak. I won't ram at you for an hour. I can do it, but I'm not going to yeah. do that to you. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I can totally do that. So you guys tell me, how long do you want the overall session to be? I mean, I know I've got some credentials in the email, but I want to hear from you guys. What is it you guys would like? I want to make your time. As far as timing goes, I don't, I don't care how long we're in here, Sorry. as long as we get the kind of topic done. Uh, I'd rather spend two hours in a room that we actually accomplish what, we're, what we set out to do than spend 45 minutes and walk away with nothing, basically. Okay. So, yeah. And the this and the event is called, is it Edge? Is that the name of it? Or what's the name of the overall, this curriculum? This lead? Lead. Lead. Okay. I've, I've had one called Edge before. That's where that came from. So lead. All right. So is this something you guys do? And again, I've read the email, but I've been going since 5 this morning, so forgive me if I haven't had all yeah, the details yet. Yeah. Um, is this something you guys are required by nationals to do every year? Or is this something you're taking upon yourself, like to build certain credentials for awards or whatever? So the way it works is we're not required to do all of them. Uh, our goal, me and him, or us, we work on the league committee. Uh, but our goal is to do all of them uh, right. per, for nationals. There's a certain set that we have to do per nationals per year uh, for awards at the end. Uh, but I think it's grown more into what experiences can we learn instead of what do we need to knock out. Yeah. So that's because kind of experiences you'll take with you, okay? The relationships you build and the experiences you take with you. So uh, here's what I'd like to do. Um, and our gentleman behind the camera, take note of this, maybe follow up in an email with me. Beyond what's in the topic that I'm going to cover, I want y'all to, and let's talk about it now, but let's think about whatever you want me to add to that. I'm going to think of things we can add. So, Seth, what are some things you would like to cover in the session we're going to have to do? Um, well, actually, the session, like this is this is the setting. Like these are the these are the guys. Good deal. So like, it's just basically what your thoughts are on certain leadership and what we should okay. know about that. Good deal. So okay, is there anything specific topic wise in certain leadership you guys do you find important at all? But I can go a lot of different routes because I can again you know, I I'm being real careful. You should be impressed. For me to stop myself like I did, that was hard because I know I would go right into certain leadership if I didn't do it. I don't want to give you a mini session tonight. Just want to tell you. What about you, sir? I mean, my, what I really have uh, an interest in, I know I'm in certain interest in the 
very well, uh, to be honest. Uh, I'm more looking at the direction of my career and trying to figure out exactly what I want to do and how, what I need to do to get there, the steps to get there. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm here to listen, to be honest. That's um, fine. Yeah, and I'm I, listening. What, what, whatever, whatever comes, comes. I, I'm fresh and I'm here to be more than my own, by everything. Good deal. And, and that's and that's the right attitude to have. And I don't and don't guys please understand that if I put you on the spot, that's just my way of engaging. I'm not expecting the right answer a certain answer at the time. I just like to give everyone a What about you, sir? Uh, mainly just how to get a proper foothold to begin with the career because you might have had made connections in the beginning of your college, but it's not gonna automatically uh, give you something to actually work towards. So find that foothold for yourself to begin with. Absolutely. Making connections other than the other than fraternity. Perfect. I can run with that. Uh, as far as servant leadership goes, uh, that's, that's the one we're talking about, right? Yes, you are correct. Okay. Uh, as far as that goes, I think it's kind of like important to highlight why we do it uh, and then like what the effects can be, uh, as well as like real world scenarios or experiences that we've, that we've accomplished, uh, just to kind of get a grasp on what it is and the uh, importance of it. Okay, absolutely. Like Caleb said, I just want to make sure, you know, like, I'm on the right track with my career, because if not, I'd probably end up like you and have like four or five different degrees, and then I finally end up knowing what I do. Oh, don't get me wrong, I started out on the right track. I just decided to do other things. So I buried my career early on. So you got to have a plan, and there was a plan all the way through. My point is with that, and that's a good point, he said, it's not that it was misguided, it's just things don't always go to plan. So, but because of servant leadership, I was able to quickly rebound and regroup and, and keep moving, even if that initial plan A didn't work. Because plan B often ended up being a much better plan. So good question there. All right, sir, what about you? So basically, like, what your opinion is, uh, like, what it is, like, what servant leadership really is, like, defined as, like, exactly. kind of that, your... That was actually be how I started out. Yeah. Because we've got to be able to define the topic before we can go off into those. So what... Kind of my initial thoughts were this. I wanted to make sure we're pretty much all on the same page. Let's define it. Uh, you know, we our session. Let's talk about what it is, and let's equally let's talk about what it isn't. And I think that's a lot of what I see. Um, keeping up, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but you know, one of the things that comes up right away is motive and intention. Okay, if you're doing it for the wrong reason, I didn't come back and mentor Taylor and his group in 2010, hoping that someone would give me a job one day. Now, I did it because I had the ability and the time and efforts to be able to help them through study hall for whatever test or, or help them schedule, but planting those right seeds. So again, without diving off into making a mini session, those are kind of some of the things we're we'll talking about because oftentimes we leave that part of the spectrum out. Next thing I want to do is I want to come up with some activities as well. When do you guys want to have this session? Let me tell you a little bit about my schedule, okay? Now remember, I'm 40 years old, so what if I tell you it's going to be mysterious to you? All right, I get up at 5 every day and I go to the gym. It does not look like it. I go to the gym at 5.30, 6.30 every day. That's how I keep my crazy schedule going. Uh, I work from 8 to 5.30 at Gadsden State. Then I come here and I'm here at 6.15 to 7.45 Monday through Thursday. I usually walk home. I uh, not walk home. I arrive home uh, about 8.30 to 9 o'clock. So a slightly busy day. All right, so the fact that I have this much energy, we're going to blame it on whatever's in that cup. Sugary, syrupy, whatever else. Uh, what day is best for you guys? So I think it may have been explained wrong. Yeah, I think no, there was some was, miscommunication. This, um, was, this is, like, yeah, this is like the session. Like This, this is, is the session. Yeah. yeah Here we are. Okay. Like, I, I, totally was, I thought this was a planning session. No, session. like, no, I sorry, really I don't, was. I don't think I made that, that kind of, like, it clear. I don't think there was. for a session, if you want to. Yeah. Wait, wait, for session. I thought this was just a meet and greet. Yeah. We can make a meet and greet. <laughs> I would like that because I want to give you guys something really polished to go. I, I honestly what I thought. I thought tonight was just about us getting together like pros and getting to know each other and share a little bit. Or is that totally going to mess y'all up? No. Uh, no. Okay. So. What is our deadline to have this done by? The uh, 25th of April before then. Before 25th of April. Okay. Can we do this? Let me look over my calendar. Um, is Barrel Hall open seven days a week? Can you walk in any time or do you have like nice? Yes. Well, I come in on the weekends all the time. As long as construction's happening, it's open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, construction. Yeah, this, this building's always open. Yeah. 
So before April 25th, because I want to put something together that's engaging. I, I mean, I could do something off the cuff and, and press y'all and not. I don't want to do that. I want to give you your, your money's worth out of it, okay? Uh, let's plan on it being an hour session or less, okay? Now, if it goes to two and we're just really hitting off, I don't have a problem with that. Is there a preferable day for you guys? He's our common guy. <laughs> Let's see. Best days. I would say next week with children's spring break. That's why I'm always yeah. yeah. available, right? So we, we make it an all chapter. We, we should do that. Yeah. We, we could make it all chapter. We could make it before we do all chapters. So we're gonna do an all chapter. Do y'all have chapter meetings on Sunday night? We do. We do. How many how many total would attend chapter meetings? Usually seventeen. Around seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I mean, we can do that here. I mean, we That's what I'm going to say. We can come in room 218 on a Sunday evening, not late, uh, like 6, 7 o'clock. What, what time do y'all typically have chat? 5. 5, you said. So we can do 5. Yeah, we can come in at 4. That's too early for me. Okay. I'm sorry, because of my church and other commitments on Sunday, so I'm trying to make it evening time. So let's, let's plan on that. Let's plan on a Sunday. I want you guys to go back to your chapter, pick a Sunday that works. And I'll work with you guys. Be happy to do that. And so, having the whole chapter, will you guys get more points for that? Will that benefit you in whatever? Or y'all just already think enough of this dynamic dysfunctional personality? You want to have everyone involved? Okay. Does this benefit everybody else? Uh, I know Sunday we're not having chapter. We're having chapter this Saturday. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do that. Uh, I'll be in the minute. Okay. So it won't be till the next weekend. Then. Yeah. Uh, let's look at. This is what I like. Let's shoot me some Sunday afternoon dates. It's easier if I have, like, if I get an email, then I have my calendar right in front of me. Instead, I don't want to commit to something and then leave you guys hanging. I'm real big. I know how busy you guys are. I want to be respectful of time. But what I want to do is kind of do that. Just keep in mind what you've seen tonight. You'll get, Seth can vouch for this, you'll get a lot of engagement. I'll be calling. We'll, I will find things for us to do because I don't, as much as I can speak for an hour, I want it to be beneficial when you guys are taking something with you. All right, so that'll give me time to uh, go from there. Uh, so we're going to define it, we're going to talk about what it is, we're going to talk about what it isn't, and then we're going to talk about applications of that. That's kind of how I'm going to break it up, one, two, three. I think when you start any type of seminar, any session, people need to know where you're going with things. And what I'm not going to do is give you guys, Seth, you appreciate this, I'm not going to give you a 55-point PowerPoint presentation on it, okay? That we have enough PowerPoints, I like PowerPoints, I teach to them, but I'll have a couple things up and I want it to be something you guys look forward to. Not, oh, here's another... Brotherhood engagement thing we've got to do. Let me so close. So, all right. With all that being said, let's start with our filmmaker. What questions do you have for me? Um, Personal or professional? Honestly, I don't. I don't think I have any questions. Um, I just want to like apologize because like I guess I just didn't make it clear that like. I'm taking 18 points what? off his test Friday, so we're good. Okay. That's that's <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> as long as you do that. Um, but yeah, I just want to like whenever we had planned it. Normally, like we tend, we typically like do the session like, um, and you can access like kind of the different modules. Like I was gonna give you like the paper tonight to do so that you can have it, but yes. I totally did not bring it with me. I can come back or I can. Be Minus twenty seven now. Yeah, I could just give it to him too, and That's he can fine. give it to you. That's fine. Um, but then that has like a lot of more information in it as well. I like that. Um, but. Yeah, I, I'm sorry for the miscommunication. That's all right. I was looking, like I said, whether, let's just say you guys had to have it tonight, I could do it on the wing, because again, it's something I'm very passionate about. I, one of the reasons I picked that topic, gentlemen, is because a lot of, I attribute my success in life are due to those relationships, serving my community in different ways. I'm gonna give you several good examples of that when we meet again, so. What about you, sir? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Not really any questions. All right. All my degrees were valuable. Remember that. All right, they all played a part. What about you, sir? Uh, I guess a personal one. I like personal one. Throw it out there. What made you want to go back to get further education? I love school. I love learning. I felt like I had accomplished what I wanted with accounting as far as academia. So accounting is my practical skill set, but psychology is my passion. I love the study of people. I love understanding. Now, having a psychology degree does not make me a psychologist. Let me make that very clear in this room, okay? Although we have a good psychology program here with our master's, you can get a master's in counseling, we don't have a PhD. But I'm still primed. If I decide, let's say I continue in higher ed, I can go back and get my PhD in clinical side. I can get a PhD in accounting. I've got the undergraduate credentials to be able to move forward. What professionally qualifies me to teach is my master's in accounting that I got from South Alabama. So I'm not saying I want to get 15 degrees. I want to be very careful with that. 
but I want to make sure that I'm finding ways to stay sharp. The way I teach the set in his group is different than how I taught 15 years ago. You know, you learn every generation is different. The millennials, uh, the older millennials now, are different than your generation. And I like that. I think finding ways to communicate, engage, mentor is what keeps you sharp. But you got to be willing to learn your culture. Very good question. Good question. I don't blame you. I wouldn't ask anything either. <laughs> so I also have a personal question. Uh, sure. You mentioned you're down at Dolphin Island. Uh, what did you do while you're down there? Dolphin Island. Now this we're going to go back to 2000s. We're going back 22 years ago. All right. So for our spring break, my senior year, I went to Oxford. I decided, hey, let's go down to Dolphin Island. Probably be the last time we get to do that. And I remember they had. We went down to the beach. We did some. We went out on some of their. I don't want to say ship. One of their large boats. Uh, I can't remember if we. Uh, I remember doing a lot of digging and research, like they would bring things from the lab and we would evaluate it. It was a fun week. They, I mean, I don't know, have you ever been to Dolphin Island Sea Lab? I've done the 16-hour uh, parade courses there. Really? Good deal. So we didn't get any, obviously, high school credit. It was more of a trip, so it was probably like hard. But I remember them exposing us to a lot of golf and sea life and different things like that. So it's becoming a blurred memory now, but it was enjoyable. That's what I remember. All right, what about you, sir? Your name and your son of the bit. Johnny Five would be alive if I had one there. All so, right. uh, now, my question for you guys before going any further, would you have thought I was in a fraternity based on the first five minutes of talking to me? Yes, no? I would say Not no. Not prior knowledge from the set. Um, probably no. Probably no? Why not? Be, well, yes and no, I see you're very talkative, but also, I don't know. I don't. I don't expect the professors and stuff to be like, oh, back my dad did all did all this. It's funny you say that. One thing that I really did strive, and this is not part of that mentorship. Maybe it should be. Maybe I'll bring it up. I guarantee you, everybody in this room can relate to this. One thing I did not want to be. So I went through. So I'm 40 years old. So I pledged in fall 2001 to get a very different time as you guys can imagine. I did not want to be the guy in 2010, even though I was young. I was in my late 20s. Back in 87, we did so and so. Nobody wants to hear that garbage. Nobody cares, all right? My goal was to do two things when I mentor. Always be that big brother mentor. You are not going to catch me drunk at the house, passed out in the bush on a Thursday night. I was not reliving my golden era. I made sure that my time was there for my, my younger brothers, okay? They needed advice. We had enough creepers that came around for homecoming and everything else that they hear everything from, okay? <laughs> so see, it doesn't matter what Greek letters out, we can all relate on so many stories. And, and that's one thing I prided myself on, because here's what I found out. If this is the standard I'm setting and I cross this line, no matter how much everyone would like laughing at study, okay, they never look at you the same after that, all right? And so it's not that I'm above it or better, you have to know your role at all times. And I think that also goes on with service leadership and mentorship. Sir, what about you? Uh, well, I'm sure I'm not sure yeah, I, would, I kind of relate with you because it, like, I've talked with a bunch of uh, a bunch of detectives and a bunch of managers as well. So we brought them on what those are. Um, the ones that are definitely brief, they have an air about them, and you can kind of tell they are. You know, they don't talk about it. Um, I think personally, what I'm looking for um, is like, um, like I don't want to be broke anymore. Off of that, uh, I want to do more consulting work. Uh, with my CIS degree, what do you think I probably should do for like a master's? Like an MBA or a with a concentration in yeah. Okay. That's Problem good. solved. Yep, there you go. I got it here. Seth, I'll exclude you from everything. I'll let you talk now. Uh, I don't really have anything. Um, yeah, that's a small little uh, One thing I would say is uh, I want Ryan to sit, I want him to sit into a list again. Um, and then, like, because like we have different phases. Okay. So like we have different speakers that come in and they'll speak for 35 or 40 minutes on like a topic. But this is a phase four, so typically phase four is just for the seniors. Okay. Um, I don't know which phase, the phase two or phase two, it's all chapter. I only yeah. sent him phase so four. All chapter A, B, C. And D, C. Yeah. All chapter one. So it's, it's different. It's right. phase right. one, two, three, four, and then all chapter A, B, C, and D. But we all have different all chapters. But yeah, we can send we can send a list of all the all chapters. To yeah, you. Mine, so it's a mixture of a bunch of stuff. Yeah, mine are almost done, um, but we do I have some other left ones. Left my all chapter, and then we haven't done the the, the all chapter for C or for four C is like risk reduction stuff. So I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing, Joe. I'm gonna give y'all a curveball. Why do you think? Although you have a stunning young lad here to my left, why else do you think I was willing to agree to do something with y'all's chapter? 
start start reader? Uh, because you want to develop us, like, and because like you can relate to like the fraternity stuff like that, and like you kind of, like you know that it's like all about leadership and stuff like that. So I just think you want to like help us grow as people. And yeah. get I ready. won't pick on every single person, but anybody else want to add to that? Why else do you think I was going to agree? Go, go ahead. You would love, love to speak to everybody. I mean, you had a lot of experience, so you know what to speak about and give us your knowledge of what you went through and how to adapt to that. Yeah. Anybody else? I know personally, if I was in this situation, I'm not trying to bring up any bad blood, but I mean, you don't have your chapter in your memory, so you don't have that brief interaction that you might miss. And I know if I was in your shoes, then I would definitely, I would definitely look at routes uh, to do that on campus as well. Yeah, it's a natural extension of something I did. That's correct. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about? Mentorship. Um, yeah. And like, especially like I, my department as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have any written interaction with professors, and most of it is like really full. They don't really interact with their students. Um, they're also super on staff too. So. That, that factors in. I'll, I'll tell you, that pains my heart more than anything is hearing that so much. Seth and I have had a number of conversations. We've got to, and I'm, I'm pointing the finger at faculty now, we've got to get away from everything's autopilot online and getting you guys back in these seats and learning to engage with you. Now, I never quit doing that. I, had, I was very limited. This time two years ago is when we shut down, all right? So I got the email, shut down, and it was like Chernobyl. I didn't walk back to my office to June 1st. I said, take your laptop, go home, and that was it. But we can't use that excuse anymore, can we? Okay? Cassette, this wasn't fun tonight. Can you imagine trying to teach life of five folk weighted average to yourself? Okay? It'll get better by Wednesday night, I promise. You all had great answers. The point is this part of getting back involved and reacclimated, even though I'm a lowly adjunct instructor, who's not to say that life could bring me back here full time? And every time I have a moment to engage, I have football players that sit right there and says class. Okay? If they have a good experience, what are they going to do? They're going to tell their other football players, hey, take John Sutter for this class. If you guys have a good experience, what are you going to do? Take John Sutter for the class. So as I'm building relationships, it's reciprocated. It's not an evil, selfish, ulterior motive. It's when you give, you'll see that return, but you have to give it selflessly. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, in fact, I talked to my dean today. Uh, said, Exeter is graduating. Okay. And most of the time, the tenured professors are actually the worst at communicating with the students because they're already, they're set in stone, you know, this team. They don't have to do anything, actually. And we've got to get away, I, I'm telling you, I want to interrupt you for a second. I think that the magical T word tenure is something that is losing its clout because there's no longer these excuses of not communicating, not being available, not being work. They're not so busy with research that they can't make time. Now, I have to be very careful. Don't go out and please say, John says y'all don't do anything. Please <laughs> don't do that, okay? I like what I do here. I like it to grow, okay? But I'm just being realistic. Guys, I know I've got about 20 years on you, but half the professors I have are still here. So I'm, you know, I know what y'all are going through in a lot of those things, all right? And I'm not here to badmouth anybody, but something you'll get, all right, if there's any nugget of gold, oftentimes those that came from the real world are the ones that are your best instructors, all right? Because I'm not here trying to show you all kinds of crazy accounting theory. I'm trying to teach you, just like I said, if you're a first-time employee, how do I get you up to speed to do the work? Because I'm the controller. I've got six companies to worry about. i got to get you up to speed. So what's the quickest and most direct way I can communicate that? doesn't mean I do it perfectly, but it certainly means I'm going to find ways to engage with you the right way. Nobody wants to come, including this guy, after a long day and sit here for an hour and a half and watch someone regurgitate every point on a PowerPoint. Okay? Not even this guy. I like hearing myself talk, but not that much. So I'm always, it doesn't matter what my other commitments are, when I come into this class or I'm working with you guys, I'm going to give you 100%. It doesn't matter if there are 10 fires back at Gadsden State. Guess what? When I get there tomorrow morning, I'll deal with those fires. Learning to compartmentalize what you have going on is also going to help you with that servanthood and leadership and all that. So I love it. You know, and if everything goes well, here's the thing. I'm not looking for flattery. But when we meet, if you guys find it very engaging, and you want to do more things, I'll always be open to that, okay? I'm here to support anybody that wants to learn and grow. I don't care what brief life, see, that's the other thing. I don't think I'm better because I was sick of sick of It doesn't matter. What matters is you've committed to something and you're wanting to grow. So don't worry what KA thinks of you or what this or that. Think about, am I building, am I learning how to build healthy relationships with people and am I using those the right way to move forward? So there you go. That's the biggest thing that I, Back when I got initiated, I never thought I was better than anybody. For me, it was just a way to get involved. CM was a part of my life. It wasn't my all-consuming activity. So when you learn to put things in the right place, you don't let them consume you. Okay? Just like a relationship. You know, if you're dating somebody, if you're always chasing after them and you're not giving other things the time they need, 
if that relationship fails, you're going to regret it, right? So you've got to learn to balance those kind of things. And before I get started, I'll have another mini session going, so I'm going to shut my mouth. What else do you guys want to know from me tonight? Anything at all? Should I take all those points away from Seth's test or just... Yeah, do it. Yeah. Wow. No, no. That was a quick response. What kind of pros are you hanging with? Seth and James? Zero. Just that whole 26. Yeah, yeah he's fine. We'll call him. Cumulative GPA has to go up. Oh, uh, there reminds me. I heard you guys. I didn't have a point. Take the point twice, though. <laughs> it's just one test. All right, I got one final question for you guys. I, don't, I hope Seth hasn't ruined this, all right? What do you think my hobby is when I'm not teaching accounting and trying to mentor impressionable young minds? We'll start you. I think I already know it. I think you ruined it. Uh, you were, uh, it's not yeah. Oh, okay. You hush. Okay. Who do you think doesn't know? The rest of them? I don't know, for sure. Start with you. Yeah, that's for you. Ask <laughs> That's the second time you brought it. It's not the basket weaving, it's underwater yeah. basket weaving. All right? Adjective matters. What do you think? He's the only guy who likes trains. Trains. Train guy. Wait, no. I don't know I do. He's thinking, huh? <laughs> Just what do you think? I'm <laughs> trying to say. I feel like you, you like golf. Everybody, Everybody wants to put me in golf. Everybody I never learned to play golf. I should have, sport, but I never did. I, don't, I, don't know I worked all the weekends. I worked every weekend. I never had time to do a golf course. I feel like it's a sport, but I don't know. People are talking to us with fire. We have big dogs. Dogs? What you, did you ever get a... Um, not trains. I was trained. I'm a pastor. It's not trains. No, not trains. <laughs> <not train. laughs> Sorry. I would say you're like model trains. <laughs> there we go. This is my basement. Watching for hours at a time. <laughs> there we go. Definitely like us. Um, Definitely. So Steve's an all-time high. No, I could see. I see basketball. Basketball. I don't get that much. I mean, I have incredible height and all. <laughs> Who else had their hand up? I love it. Nobody got it. What is it, Seth? I'm a sports car guy. I'm all in Speaking all. Speaking of cars. Yes. <laughs> So, now, now that I'm into cars, what do y'all think I drive? What do you think I have for a toy? Start I think I think I also have yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who, who knows? Don't say it. Who knows? Who doesn't know? All right. What do you think I have? I said a Chevelle. Chevelle? Okay, so I got two Chevelles. I feel like you're a Pontiac guy. She's okay. Got to be something. I'm going to make you pick something. I'll tell you guys what he said. What do you think? What do you think? Artist Cylindry, but it's probably not it. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know. Probably not it. Keep going. Uh, 1969 Dodge RT. Not that old. Go a whole lot new. Wait, it's, a car, sp though. it's a sport? It's the right car. It's the right car. Dodge Sport. Yeah. 2008. Keep going. 2018. Keep going. Older and older. Go in the right direction. 2019. Keep going. 2022. 2022. Not that new. <laughs> <laughs> Not new, dude. I'm hoping. Hey, I've got a 21 uh, 390 Hughes gas pack charger. That's my. Ooh. That says covered because gas is $85 a gallon. So, yeah. that's that is why there's a painted blue Honda Accord in the parking lot. Hey, yeah, right. So my dad, and uncle, so back to long story short, I'm actually a Mustang guy, but I like those Chargers and Challengers. My dad and uncles all collected cars growing up, so that was the hobby. All right? Even though my grandfather has a 50-acre farm in Roto, not my dad and uncles, no one can fish, hunt anything. It was all cars, so that's what I grew up with. So I'm not... As mechanically inclined, probably say something like Seth, but if I hear noise, I can tell you what it is. Like, I detailed, so that's how I made my money through high school, college, and grad school. I detailed cars. Uh, my dad was part of a car club, and so, again, keep, my, keep in mind uh, my age, 40, so I was a teenager in the 90s, so like Fox Body Mustangs, all those, Celines, uh, there were a lot of neat cars, so I found out, hey, if I get good at detailing, those guys will have me detailing, so what else would I do? Driving all that nice stuff, Cobra, Celines, and all that. Then when I was 18, I started working at a little car dealerships. I just loved being around a car. So didn't make a career in the automotive field, but loved being around it. So always worked with my school schedule, too. That's what I liked about it. So, yeah, I'm a car guy. That's what I enjoy. I used to when I was y'all's age. Yes, I got into the gym when I was in my early 20s. Hurt my back, got out of it. Working in corporate America, we'll do this when you sit down all day, okay? Drinking Cokes all day, doing tax returns. So 
don't put this on early, it's hard to get off and get my age. But why do I go to the gym? I don't do it to look 22. I do it because, trust me, you feel better the older you get, okay? Take care of yourself. That's really not kind of part of our session. Do the things now. People will tell you, you don't do them now. When life hits, you've got wifey, and you've got kid on the way, and you're working those hours, you're not going to go to the gym after work. It's not going to happen. She ain't going to let you. All right, go ahead. Now, I know you said that you're a Mustang guy, and you have charges and stuff like that. What's your opinion on Camaros? <laughs> I know. I think there's a reason to ask. So, that's what I feel about GM products. Not the best thing in their God's creation. Oh, goodness. I think. I don't want. I, I feel like I've built a positive impression. I don't want to ruin the time. I, go for see, it. I'm going to be as diplomatic as you would expect a professor to be. GM is not my forte. Because I worked at GM dealerships and I saw the horrendous lowest bidder quality. <laughs> Throw it together, send it down the line. We're government motors. We don't care. They build us out. Not a 69 Camaro or Chevelle or a classic GM. Like, right? I have a 2016 Camaro, and I can tell you, sometimes it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but here's the thing I'll say, because I'm fair. I will not sit here and say everything Ford makes is perfect, right? Here's what I think. I think, I think there are certain models that they do very well. If it's V8 rural drive, that's going to tend to be your one most durable vehicle. So, yeah, your Tahoe's, your Silverado's, those are last year, F-150's, your 5-liter Mustangs, depending on how people drive them. How do most people drive chargers, gentlemen? Right on this red line. Right list. <laughs> they don't even make it home with the temporary tag before they're in a the ditch, right? <laughs> so my hope is that my scat pack will actually be worth something after the 98% of them are totaled out. I had a lot of people when I ordered that car go, Joel, why didn't you order a Hellcat? Okay, that car is $30,000 more starting base price. I teach you cats in state, not yet, okay? The scat pack's part of the budget, not the Hellcat. So maybe one day, maybe set up and get maybe, maybe a nice competitive loan. I'll make you a long for a brand new Corvette. See, I need something that's going to last, all right? I don't need all that creaky plastic, all right? Plastic fantastic. Too much plastic for me. So. Um, there's a Monte Carlo that's around on campus. Okay. What? Years Monte Carlo. Yeah, it's the 70 other one that's going to be up with more parts of Patterson. Oh, does it have a silver tag or a red tag? I don't remember. Does it have like 28 inch wheels on it? Okay. You're talking about that one, probably. Yeah. Like a 2000, 2000, 2000. That's, 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 that's like a real car. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I heard Seth say something bad about a GM product. Don't be proud. Everything's really 2000. Yeah. Um, if Pontiac only had continued, they could have really turned the GA into something special. I think they could. So. But yeah, and that's the thing, guys. You know, find something you enjoy. And then again, I'll leave you guys with this because I don't want to keep you too long. My goal, I appreciate you coming in when you did is you build relationships, right? That's the best way to find something you like and you'll find a way to serve. And you can even take a hobby and find ways to be philanthropic with it, sir. So let's do that. So send me all that information, however that's gonna be. You guys talk it over your chapter. If you wanna do just this, we'll do it down Sunday night. If you wanna do the whole chapter, it might be worth it, all right? Doesn't matter to me, but I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. I hope you guys got at least a little something out of tonight. At least enough to say, hey, he's worth coming back to our set, find someone else. <laughs> you may get those chat for uh, selecting man for this. Uh, how are you guys coming with your other sessions? Y'all got you got speakers lined up? Are you still looking for people? We've got some speakers lined up. I've been having trouble trying to find some for different things. I have one based on team management and stuff like that, like team building and stuff like that. Um, and we're just kind of working on phase four now, really. We're, we're kind of up to par, I would say. You know, how many total sessions do you have to have? Uh, I don't know how many. Like, I would say roughly like thirty. Every it's about two. Every I would, week. I would yeah. say two every how often? Week. Two every week yeah. for how many yeah. weeks? That's not how many we need. Well, it's more. We that's that's what we have. Every <laughs> that's what we do. Well, that's a lot. It's a lot. There, there's probably close to fifty sessions, for, but that's for the entire school year. Uh, we kind of dropped the ball at the chapter last semester and didn't really do any. So now we're Crunching the time. Time. Yeah, I'm sure you know what that's like <laughs> with a fraternity. No, nothing would ever be last minute thrown together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, so come in, let's start cleaning. Let's uh, let's make sure we uh, fill out all these paperwork. Sure. Right? The car show. Yeah. I think the uh, I think the most difficult thing that I dealt with with nationals, and I'm sure we can talk about this for two hours, is and I know I talked to Seth is when I was advising, when I was a mentor from 2010 to 2012. And this may be. GSU culture thing, it may be a national, maybe it was a combination, but let's say we had one guy 
that acted a fool. I'm on you, Seth, because I know Seth too well. All right, he's just a good punch bag. It's Saturday. We're at the game. We've got the tailgate. Everyone's acting semi do not like. All right, so things moving along fine. And then we get Seth, who goes and gets drunk on his own accord somewhere, not part of the group, stumbles into the game, harasses some six-year-old girl. You know, he's just <laughs> a fool. Okay. And of course, that's an issue. I right? can see that. Of course, we're going to hear from Terry Casey. We're going to hear from whomever, and we address the issue. We kick Seth out. What I didn't like at that time is even if we did everything right, we still as a chapter got punished. We weren't all drunk together. We weren't all doing something. If someone isolated was doing something that we were unaware of, but as soon as we became aware of it, we addressed it. So I always felt, and I hope it's different for you guys, it used to frustrate me to no end as an alumni advisor. Hey, we addressed this issue. Why are we still in trouble? Why are we still in social probation for six months? We, this guy is no longer part of the chapter. This wasn't something that happened at the house. But there were about two or three of those instances, and that's what that's what killed our charter. Is we collectively did nothing wrong, but we had one or two, three people either get accused of something or do something. We addressed it the way they wanted us, and still didn't work. So that's where I got defeated uh, as far as dealing with nationals in my chapter. I thought, you know, if we're doing everything right, we're learning to handle things. If all of y'all are my employees, and I have a problem with set, I'm not punishing all of y'all. I'm going to deal with set. Unless it's a behavior I see in every one or the majority, then I will address it with the policy. But that's not the way it was run back then. So, um, you know, the problem I get is my alumni that are much older than me from the age early 90s, they're now in their mid to late 50s, so they're going through kind of their midlife like, crisis. We need to get the charter back. And, you know, <laughs> rah, rah, rah. Like, where were you from 2010 to 2015 when it was me and two other alumni running the show, trying to work with nationals, do all that? Y'all, crickets, crickets in every public social media forum. But oh, now y'all want her back and you want, oh, why are you so good ball? I don't need to, I, I did what I needed to with it. Now it's time to move on. And I think that's also what's important, gentlemen, I'll bring this up to, is know when to close certain chapters in your life. It doesn't mean you can't revisit and say hello, but don't hold on to things just because they were golden hair. Like the, like the high school jock that goes back to every high school game, he's still got 87 on the letter oh, jacket. Yeah. Let it go, right? There's a time for homecoming, there's a time to reflect, but then some people have trouble moving on. Oftentimes those who have trouble moving on why do they have trouble moving on? I'll leave you with this. I promise I'll dismiss you. Why do they have trouble moving on? Because they're depressed. <laughs> okay. If they are, that, that's a result of something that answers my question. What would cause them to be depressed? Why would they have trouble moving on, which is which results in them being depressed? They didn't find that spark in something else. Yeah, you're on the right track. Their life sucks now. <laughs> they did what? Now? Their life sucks now. <laughs> yeah. It's if you don't prepare for the future, and that's what all y'all are trying to do here, right? This is why we're doing these things. Is that you've got to you've got to enjoy the moment while you're being purposeful, looking forward. A lot of my friends, fraternity brothers, you say, John, you're you're you always live in the future, not in the past. You're too forward thinking. I enjoy the moment, but yeah, I was planning on the future. Okay, and a lot of them are where they are, and I've been able to do all the things I've wanted to do, even changing jobs and careers and doing all that. I didn't do any of that haphazardly. I did those things, again, I'm faith-based, so I did them prayerfully, but I did them purposely. And so even if something didn't go immediately to the original plan because of the relationships and everything I did, we'll get, we'll get into all that. We have that meeting. So, all right, Seth, anything else I need to cover with your group tonight? All right. You've heard, from, you've heard a lot from me tonight. You're probably exhausted. You've had all the stuff that you can have. All right, gentlemen, any other final comments, questions, concerns? Yes, sir? Um, so I ha uh, with the lead sessions and stuff like that, there's one that I can't find anybody for, but like, I, like it's spirituality, and you said that you're very faith driven. Would you do that for us? Sure. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'd be happy to. We'll, we'll organize a time for it as well. Okay. That's fine. So, as far as the in depth topics, everything that you would like me to look at that nationals would like you guys to cover, mm -hmm. you're going to send to me? Is that yes, correct? and I have copies of, I have like papers with like a lot more information than what's like on the website itself, so I can give you those as if well. If you give that, give it to Seth, would that work? And he'd give it to me Wednesday yeah. night, I can start leaving. So yeah. what I like you guys to do is you'll have your next chapter meeting Sunday night, is that correct? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday the 19th. Because yeah. hopefully we're going to the beach, right? We're supposed to be going to oh, the beach. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Y'all got spring break. Yeah. Our spring break's good, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I forgot. This is y'all's So wait a second. Y'all are going to spring break. Yeah. And somehow we're going to come back and put on a car show that I'm going to attend. Well, that's going to be the tires <laughs> over facing on that side of it in a second. Are you bringing the scat back? I am. Yeah. That's why I'm yes. registering number one. We're not even, well, we're going to spring break to do officer transitions. So we're going to be working 
I'm still getting at the beach. They were coming back. That's a dangerous combo. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. It's not, it worked out. Uh, that's cool. Though. Though. I mean, it gives you a reason to bond other than just go down there and drink. It changes the scenery. Water. So it allows people to do serious uh, work without feeling like it's serious work. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. Kind of like retreat is a better environment. It's like it's like doing office work, not in the office, from time yeah. to time. So I know I've got a mix of agents in here. Who determines? Is this? Tell me again. Is this all part of like the executive council in here tonight, or is this just a random assortment of your attorney in this office? Most of well, the seniors in here. I think it's just me, Jesse, okay. Martin, and senior, and Lincoln. Uh, we're we're supposed to be here. The others came on their own. Uh, yeah. Appreciate y'all coming. That says that shows a lot of initiative. So. So that probably built up a legend, and now you've been by. Welcome to the real world. You're brought back down to what you really get, okay? It's as good as it gets. So. Seth speaks highly. Yeah. Do it now. Seth speaks highly. Seth Brando. Yes, Seth yeah. Brando. Oh, where's Brando tonight? He wants to be here. He's always got to be here. <laughs> so tell him he's, I better see him in class tomorrow night. He doesn't want to miss this week. So, Seth, you think this is painful? You should see what they're covering. You know, yeah. So, but gentlemen, I hope you see anything. Enjoy, be purposeful in what you do. All right, if you enjoy what you do, you'll have as much energy at 8.42 at night as you do at 9.30. Right? But it's, it's a lot of attitude, all right? A little bit of gym, a lot of attitude. So, but hey, I look forward to working with y'all, getting to know you. And again, that, that's my goal here. Even in, in the role I'm in, I want to support and encourage you along the way. Okay, so beyond even our meetings, if I've left you with an impression, my contact information is going to be available to anybody. I'm happy to meet one on one, talk one on one, all right? Doesn't matter if you're never a student of mine. If you're a student here at Jack State, I'm here to help leave you better off, even if it's for 10 minutes in my class. All right, guys, y'all are dismissed. Y'all are stay around. I don't care. I don't want you to feel. Is that someone trying to come in? Oh, it sounded like the door was open. Oh, that was me. So, usually I get kicked out, so clean this out. Do a good job. But yeah, y'all just get together. Y'all decide what. We'll take a, a Sunday after that first weekend in April. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. a Sunday, maybe yeah. Sunday, whatever works. And then you can just email me, um, and then we, I can let yeah. everybody know. Um, but yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, sorry for the miscommunication again. No, it's not a problem at all. Gentlemen, enjoyed it. <laughs> Good firm handshake. He feels like a military guy. All right. <laughs> Good to have you guys. Thank y'all for coming tonight. Thank Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate well, it. Yeah. Let me sell this stuff down.